member. May I now call on Honorable Member? Kian is please. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, being among the last person to speak, uh, most of the points that I noted raised have been already have already been dealt with. Uh, I would still uh, want to say one or two things. Uh, regarding uh, the report on COVID-19. Honorable Speaker, uh, uh, speakers before me uh, spoke the fact that uh, people uh, do not face COVID-19 seriously. But I think for me, uh, the whole issue started uh, at the beginning, when money issues were involved, actually people actually know that the COVID, uh, COVID is existing in other countries, but the, for, for the Gambia, the issue started when that huge sum of money, 500 million, uh, was mentioned. When the president that he appropriated 500 million to fight, the, uh, to fight COVID-19. Uh, when, when that happened, uh, a lot of attention was focused on the money instead of the uh, disease. Uh, because many people now uh, thought that people, the government, the way they handled the money, the way they managed the money, uh, many people were not happy with it. And therefore, um, they said that the government is using this as a venture to make money, that the longer this COVID-19 issue uh, lingers around, the more opportunity is for the people to make money. So this is one of the reasons many people do not actually subscribe to this idea of COVID-19, and therefore they did not respect the regulations uh, that followed after the, uh, after the first state of emergency was discussed in the National Assembly here. Um, actually, when that first uh, when the first state of emergency was issue was tabled in the assembly here, uh, many people we approved 45 days. Then nobody thought that we would we, or it was nobody's desire that you would come back here again to discuss the same issue because we thought that by the expiry of the, four, the first 45 days, uh, this thing would have been done and over. Uh, but unfortunately, what we are seeing is the, the number of cases that we are registering in this country. So for me, uh, that is very, very worrisome. It's, it's taking it's a very serious toll in other parts of the world. And this is a disease that is looming over us as a country. And the country is very, very poor. The people are poor. The government is poor. So when we are faced with this kind of situation, at this moment, what people need to understand is the seriousness of this disease. And therefore, all hands must be on the, everybody must support, uh, the, must support the fight against this disease. Of course, when you, go everywhere, when you go around the country, of course, people definitely know that this is existing. It is existing, it's a reality, but they don't, want to accept, uh, they, they don't want to accept the fact that it is, it, it is in the Gambia because they saw it as a, a venture for the government to make more money, uh, which is very, very unfortunate. Now, regarding the regulations, I have made my personal observations. Uh, some of the regulations are not adhered to. Uh, for example, the open market regulation, the regulation that relates to the open markets. Uh, on the first day of Ramadan, I was in the Brikama market and I was scared at what I saw. There was no suicide distancing at all. And given the nature of our society in the Gambia here, 
uh, may God forbid, if this disease spreads in the Gambia, it is going to be a disaster. It's going to be a total disaster. In our homes, we know we sleep in trees and falls in the beds. We share practically everything uh, from food, you know, utensils, everything we share. So if this disease happened to spread in the Gambia, well, the, the, the consequences are going to be too much for this country to bear. Now, um, when the open market regulation was, I think, revised sometime uh, uh, along the line, uh, what happened was that for the food vendors, the time that they are required to spend in the market selling, I think it was from 6 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and then thereafter, other set of sellers can come and take over the market. But what happened was that people were, the effect of that was that people were given just limited time to do the shopping so that everybody rushed to the market to do their shopping between six o'clock and one o'clock. And that resulted into a very serious congestion in the market at that time. So I think that if we have to, uh, if we have to extend this time, some of those regulations need to be looked at. And then there was also the issue of our uh, places of worship. Uh, of course, somebody mentioned here that we are carriers of messages from our provinces, uh, from our constituencies. Uh, we relate their issues in the National Assembly here. Of course, we have been receiving a lot of calls from imams, from religious people, from everybody that look, you are closing your, you, are, you have closed down the mosque. People are not going to the mosque to pray, but there is no social distancing observed in the, in the, in the markets. So what is the sense in that? So that area also, we need to look at it properly if you have to extend this. Maybe if it is possible, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but if it is possible, we can allow mosques to operate with limited, uh, uh, while at the same time, social distancing will be required in mosques. We can work with the mosque committees, have, uh, limit the number of people that can go into the mosque depending on their sizes, and then frequent fumigation of the most to allow just to allow people to uh, do their uh, worship in the mosques and in the churches. That's another issue. And then there was also the issue of uh, the borders. You know, the report somewhere mentioned that there was no proper coordination between the Ministry of Justice and the uh, and the and the law enforcement agencies, the the the, the, the services, and the services, and I think that is true, because uh, fighting this, putting these regulations into effect, and to make sure that they are effectively monitored and implemented, there should be coordination between all the majors, all, between all the stakeholders, all the institutions that matter. Now. What I observe is that uh, in the Gambia here, uh, our borders are very porous. Of course, there are certain key areas, to, uh, certain key border crossing areas that can be protected. There are some Gambia, part of which is in Senegal and part of the other part in Senegal. How do we monitor those places? How do we ensure that people do not cross from these places? Uh, from other countries, uh, from Senegal into the Gambia. This is challenge. People, you know, the, our, our borders are so that you can just walk across the Gambia into Senegal, or you can just walk uh, across into Senegal at any time of the day, in, even at night. So how do we monitor those things? Now, this would require the deployment of security services, security services. But again, there are challenges. And the challenges that are mentioned in the report uh, relates to the the issue of transportation mobility that the security forces yes they might be ready they, they are there but they are not mobile to be able to monitor these border crossings effectively and of course one honorable member mentioned and i agree entirely with him that uh, now that the workforce in the government is reduced many of the government offices are staying at home. Some are working from their homes. Uh, 
but the government vehicles are there, it would be a great idea and it would add a lot of value to our fight against COVID-19 if those government vehicles can be impounded, actually impounded, and be given to the security forces to use to monitor and control the border. Because so far, most of the cases that we have registered so far are imported cases. Of course, we do have some local transmissions. So since the uh, the disease is spreading in Senegal, uh, I think they have registered far more cases than the Gambia. And since it is difficult to uh, to, 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 to control the borders, I think the security further supported. They need to be further strengthened to be able to uh, patrol and to, to, uh, to be able to patrol the border and control the inflow of people into the country from Senegal. Uh, on that note, Honorable Speaker, um, I want to reserve the rest of my opinion until uh, the motion is tabled by the Honorable Minister of, uh, of Justice. And that's the time I'll be able to see uh, whether to support this one or not. So, on that